Fashion, culture, the next step in racked evolution. New York City, where the city is York and the York is city. That phrase originally is referencing Salt Lake City in Utah, but I'm stealing it from the Mormons. What are they gonna do? Waterboard me with apple juice? My body is ready, mitt. I arrived in Nueva York, decked out in the finest. I'm talking sweatpants, a giant baggy t-shirt with a photo of Danny DeVito, the spherical god himself on it, and Crocs fitted to the T, looking like the sexiest woman at the homeless shelter. I truly expected to emerge from Penn Station and then immediately gets serenaded by the sweet sounds of George Michael's careless whisper, performed by sewer rats with tiny saxophones and little fedoras. I'd throw them a Chuck E. Cheese token as payment and say, thanks little rat man. They'd say, what the heck is this, Chuck E. Cheese? That sellout has no talent, no integrity. Then they'd spit at my feet and scurry back to their shift at a bodega. But alas, that did not occur. I was instead met with the overwhelming stench of urine. The real fun is trying to discern whether it's from a dog or a human. It's the best game to play in the city, aside from the the one where I go to Wall Street and start throwing pennies at men coming out of Goldman Sachs whilst screaming, I know what you did to the economy. I was a fresh, sweaty little 18 year old when I looked around at the suburban purgatory that I inhabited and thought, no. So I did what any naive shelter teenager who had fallen asleep to one too many episodes of Broad City would do, and applied exclusively to only colleges in the New York City area. I put all of my Gwyneth Paltrow vaginal eggs in one basket, as the saying goes. Luckily, I did get accepted into Columbia, the country. It turns out I had applied for a visa. I'm making this video because some of you might have some sort of wide-eyed preconceived notions of what the city is like. Maybe you watched an episode of Sex in the City where the tall blonde one is sipping on a martini and talking about giving the hand Hoover 3000 into a senator at a charity event. Just living it up in cheetah print and cute shoes, leading you to think, hey, that could be me. You envision yourself twirling around in fashionable outfits that you shoplifted from the Forever 21 near your house. The security guard that works there is kind of hot, and frankly, you want to get caught. You little slut. Well, there is Paul Blart fanfiction for a reason. Not a good one, but still. Maybe you're from a small town and being perpetually stuck in a Bruce Springsteen song, you just gotta get out and head for the big city. Plus, you've turned 18 and your town has already met their quota for lonely artistic bisexuals. They're sick and tired of you loitering outside of the only thrift store in town and constantly cuffing your jeans. So you have no choice but to pack your bags and move. I don't blame you for wanting out of Pacoima. Unfortunately, New York City is only fun to move to if you are the child of a wealthy Russian oligarch or Saudi businessman, where they get to live such a life of imperial opulence that any one of their feudal peasant ancestors would begin weeping compulsively if they were ever to witness it. Just imagine getting to live off of the filthy blood money that your father committed multiple atrocities just to procure. But you don't care, because Chanel purses just look so cute hanging off of your dainty, partially malnourished wrist. If you happen to be one of those yuppie rich kids, welcome to NYC. Everybody hates you with a burning passion. Wearing a tiara does not make you the second coming of Audrey Hepburn. Somebody has to tell you because your fake friends won't. They have a private group chat where they talk smack about you. I bet you didn't know that. I'm in it. Either you have a secure and consistent stream of income, or you have a solid understanding of yourself and exactly what you're in this city for. I'm talking pursuing a dream or trafficking cocaina. These are the only two motivators strong enough for you to make the move. And even then, the question still remains. Are you prepared to suffer? Truly suffer? Become so accustomed to the taste of rejection and abject failure that you actually develop a likening to it? Tap dancing on the poverty line while being so surrounded by gender fires who tap you on the shoulder and ask, Oh, I'm so sorry, but do you know where the Soul Cycle Studio is? You just finished working an eight-hour shift at your wage slave job and are also crawling out of a K-hole. To make matters worse, this wasp has the audacity to wear a t-shirt that says, Immigrants, we get the job done. And you slap the oat milk latte out of their hands, make direct eye contact with them and say, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. If you are not prepared to have at least three or more of these experiences per week, then the city's just not for you. You're just Bitter. What was that? You're just bitter that the city overwhelmed you. That you moved to the big city to pop your pussy on the Chrysler building, but you just weren't cash money enough to make it, huh? Sad. Yes, yes I am bitter. I'm bitter that I was a foolish child who didn't know what I was getting myself into. Who underestimated the soul-crushing effect that walking through Washington Square Park at night and having a strange man yell, have you or a loved one ever suffered complications from transvaginal mesh would have on my psyche. How did he know? New York is more an idea than a place. It doesn't actually exist. 
you know? God, I am so deep. Sure, there are physical structures, massive skyscrapers, and ostentatious luxury apartment complexes where the wealthy engage in degenerate nighttime activities that violate several international human laws, and there are people roaming down below, eating hot dogs, and homeless men fiddling their diddle sticks aggressively on a subway cart while screaming New York, New York by Frank Sinatra until eventually everyone just leaves. Not me, though. I stay. I love when he gets to the chorus. He's been working to match the busting of his nut to the climax of the song, and frankly, I think that's very much baddie behavior on his part. I support acquiring unique skill sets, regardless of how illegal they might be. But besides these tangible features, New York City does not actually exist. It is a place that takes residence in your mind. Depending on who you are, NYC exists in two alternate realities simultaneously. A Schrodinger city, if you will. If you're a good old-fashioned patriot of the US of A, sipping on moonshine while sharing Facebook memes of how it was Hillary that invented Ebola, then New York City is a leftist cesspool where busloads of limp-wristed individuals take turns urinating on the Constitution. A perfectly valid brunch time hobby. If you are a starry-eyed young theater kid, the city is a shining beacon. A place where hopes and dreams could come true, and you can finally show all of those mean kids at your high school making TikToks about you that you actually are going to get famous, Ashley! New York manages to be both these things while also not. Did that make sense? If not, I'm still okay with that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you will make it. I hope you do. That was a moment of sincerity that you will never see again. I applaud you for even having the guts to take a risk. And if you fail, well, there's always room in my sad little club. We have snacks and apple juice that Jimmy's mom bought. Shout out to you, Debra! <laughs> As much as I've talked trash about this place, there actually are some elements of the city that are worth all of the pain and suffering that it takes to live there. Number one, the exhilaration of being in a bustling metropolis where some of the most important decisions in the world are being made. You're not invited to those meetings, but still. The energy radiating in the city is palpable, overwhelming at times, but a vibrating sensation that reminds you that you're alive, you have blood pumping through your veins, you have IBS, where is the nearest bathroom? Number two, direct access to real, raw, unfiltered culture. I'm not talking about the Met or the Puerto Rican Day Parade. No, no. I am talking about an art installation where a woman wearing no bra recites lines from the vagina monologues while dousing herself in baby oil. It gets a great review in the Times. Or a couple arguing outside of a Trader Joe's. The woman yells at her boyfriend that he can't leave her because she's pregnant. She's lying, of course. Oh, the telenovela plot thickens. Number three. Authentic cuisine served to you in the sketchiest locations possible. If you enter an ethnic restaurant and none of the employees are related to each other, is going to be trash. Everyone in the restaurant is going to be rude to you because this establishment does not concern themselves with customer service. They spit in the face of hospitality, as they should. Nobody owes you kindness. The person working the cash register is fully a child, but she can count, so what's your problem? Are you going to alert CPS? Like a snitch? All of these factors must be in play for the meal to be delicious. Number four, being around some of the most attractive and stylish people on earth. The random kid on the subway serving looks. And yes, he just did a death drop. It's a muscle tick of his. You will see multiple strangers at any given location, a bookshop, a CVS, an abandoned warehouse where you sometimes go to scream, that are so attractive that you would pay for them to run you over with a car. They will smash your heart into a million pieces, but yet you will still keep crawling back to them for more, whimpering, please, more milk, mommy. Baby needs sustenance. Disgusting. Is this a positive thing? Well, if you're a masochist, then yes. Number five, the most important one, of course. The ability to act like a complete and utter freak with absolutely nobody stopping you, with the exception of maybe the police. Wanna drop a deuce in front of Trump Towers? Honey, you'll be cheered on. Wanna start a fist fight with the Times Square Elmo? Square up, buttercup, and get ready to have your rocked. Getting into at least one fight per day is part of those actors' contracts. Sure, maybe a few German tourists will start recording you, resulting in your appearance on the German website Real People of America. But that's just the price that you pay for wanting to get messy at 5 p.m. Anyway, if you buy a ticket to the Big Apple, just make sure that it's two-way. Shout out to my patrons! If you'd like to help finance my debauchery, then click on my Patreon link in the description down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Or don't. I have no control over your actions. Or do I? I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Kind of a joke. Bye.